Hey, what's up, guys? As always, it's 3DB. On this one, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I made this beautiful Mark 42 custom color wave. This one was definitely a good one, guys. There was a lot of pieces, a lot of things I had to put together, and I tried out a couple new techniques, and it looks like everything came out pretty good, guys. I can't wait to show you. Stay tuned. guys so this build is gonna be a lot of fun reason being I'll be able to teach you guys a lot um, I had this part of the dome it's printing like this and it failed and it was like one of the worst fails ever that I've ever had because for the first time I started to get that spaghetti string so I came down and my printer was just like an absolute mess there was string everywhere I didn't record it because I was like so shocked it was like the first time it ever happened to me but I stopped the prints immediately. I cleaned out the clog. I had to cut my Capricorn too. It was, it was ugly. But we still got the print. This was probably like one of the most challenging prints I've ever done. Cause like everything seemed to have some like weird parts. Um, like this was starting to build up. And for some reason it had built supports back here. It was trying to fail. So I had to so I had to print these two parts separately, but it still came out good. I had to get this part of the scoop. I'll show you guys how I use my slicer tool or how I just use like my print bed just to get all that done. But this was taking so much time. I and mean, this is for, for somebody that I couldn't like just leave these here and just throw these away. So I had to figure out something. So stay tuned guys. This assembly is gonna be a fun one. All right, thank you guys. I already know the drill by now. So as far as sanding, I made a video on how to sand rough PLA prints. Um, so I won't go too in depth into that on this video. I'd say just check that video out. There you can see exactly, um, <clears throat> I did a Mandalorian helmet. Most of the helmets that I do, um, as far as domes, I print them upside down. Um, it's just more reliable to print it that way. But when doing so, I don't use supports on everywhere. I use custom supports, so you'll probably still see like little parts or braces where they were. Knocking this down, the reason why I do this, one, knocking this down is super easy. And two, if I was to print this right side up, it would be a lot tougher for my printer to start building this little scuff down here and then connecting that rather than just having it upside down and it's already apart, building up like that. So. <clears throat> I don't really mind that that doesn't really take too much too much time all I'm going to do is start low so about like 60 grit paper and then work my way up to 220 filling that in with wood filler and primer um, besides that everything else came out like glass literally so this jaw I just hit with like the 180 and then go to 220 on these and pretty much everything else and once I'm done getting everything grinded down, everything sanded down, of course I'm going to hit it with the filler, uh, wood filler or filler primer in any, any, um, any gaps. Prime again, sand again. Let's get to it. And then just between each grit switch, I'll just show you guys. So I just ran over a little quickly. You can see like where I ran over it. You can see like the ash or you might not be able to. You'll hear how crusty it is, how rough it sounds, and then you'll hear, um, as I keep going, how soft it gets from there. So this is the first bit of sandpaper, the 60 grit. Again, I just use the little cutters that come with the um, that come with the printer, just to get like these little hairs that are sticking up. So something like this, you guys can see. Let me try to get it in. It's not coming in too clear, but just little hairs that is sticking up on the print. I'll just cut those off with my fingers. I mean, not my fingers, but what came with the printer, those little pliers. And then go down with the uh, sand, uh, sandpaper more and more. But you see like where I went? See how smooth that is already? And then you hear that. So that's why I just break it down, grit by grit by grit, until I get it smooth, and then wood filler, and then the primer. 
All right, and again, I sand from, if I have to go from like a 60, I use my sanding block just to help out pretty much. So I don't get hand cramps or anything like that. This just helps get me a, a pretty much a bigger surface. But as you can see already, with just the 60 grit, uh, it's already starting to get smooth. Back here, I didn't really have to because if I do this to the 60 grit, it's going to start scratching the plastic. I just want to really get that rough part. And you can see I can run my finger over now and you, you can hear that it's not like making that crunchy noise. It's coming down. So from here, I'll go up. I think the next one up I have is a one, I don't want to say 120, but I think it's a 120. Yeah, I have a 120 that I'm going to hit it with next. Here we go. Right, now I just hit it with the 120. And now that I got from the 60 to the 120, I started to sand the rest of the helmet too. This is real smooth. So, this piece here was part of the fail. Came out like all etched out, messed up. Still gonna save it, still gonna use it. But now that I did that, gonna hit it with the 180. And then from there, I'm going to hit it with the filler. The reason I'm going to do it that way, I'm going to try something different this time. So I'm going to pretty much, once I add the filler primer, that's where it always shows like where I need to go in a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to go on with the, with the, um, with the 220. And just to save a little bit of the 220 as well. I got to go to Home Depot and get some new stuff. But this is going to be hit with the 180. Once I finish this with the 180, then I'm going to get the other parts. Get those prime them so by today everything should be sanded and at least connected I'm gonna do all of that first Ooh, I can feel it in my arms I can feel the burn as you see though nice and smooth in just a couple of minutes like I said I use the hand sander and some elbow grease but you can get you a palm sander to cut down the time. It's electric. The only thing I would say with those, just be careful because if you're grinding, grinding, grinding on one spot, you can. Uh, of course, it's plastic heat. Plastic, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can get what will happen there. But these, like I said, came out pretty good. Everything came out pretty solid. So when they come out like that, I still sand them just a little. Just so that the sand, I mean, so that way the paint sticks a lot better. Or the primer sticks a lot better when I first start. But now that I got all of this done, what I'm gonna do now is just add the wood filler to the top of this, let that dry, and then fill in any other places that I see that need on the helmet. And then after that's done, I'll assemble everything and then prime it. And Viola! I'm just playing. Voila, like magic. So now that's everything knocked down to 180 grit, from 60 to 120 to 180 on this. And then for everything here, just 180. And then I patched in some of the places here. And just a little bit on this. Everything else is pretty solid. I may have to, I had to hit under these eyes with some 60 grit. It had supports when it was um, building up here, but normally on these helmets, um, that comes in like that. Just because that's like the first layer. It's kind of the same reason why my dome helmet, when it's upside down, comes out like that way. It's like the first layer that you're seeing outside there, so. That won't be too bad, but everything else is done. What I'll do now is just wait for everything to dry. Uh, I'll probably do this mask right now, but just start to PLA weld everything together now. That way everything starts to look like something. I pretty much already welded the helmet together, uh, the mask together. So these two parts are already solid, but I'm going to be showing you guys something a little different. Pretty much, um, you see this little line right here? I'm going to use some of the filament, or not some of the filament, some of the raft when I printed this. So I'm going to be taking some of this raft and just melted it in there to pretty much cover up this seam. So I'll show you guys how to do that as well. 
pretty much the same thing. Just want to get a nice and even, nice little line of it. Cover where you're trying to go. And then just melt that all in there. Try to start with the edges first. Just be very careful. This is the front of the mask. So I don't want to cause any like dents or anything like that. But I'm just running the, the flat part of this right over the edge. So it's, it's solid in there. So it sticks. Some parts you might have to be a little bit tougher on than others. Like there was a little lump in some of this, but it's all good. And now you see that line is gone. Now, of course, with this part, all I'm going to do is sand it, prime it, and just keep knocking it down. I'll probably have to get some 60 grit sandpaper again and just try to get this well on there. Okay, I just wanted to add here. So I'm just using the, the, the flat part of this, which is pretty much all flat. And just rubbing it over there lightly. On the back is where I went a little bit deeper. These don't really matter as much, but the presentation of it, the front of it does. So with that, I'm just gonna take a little bit more care. But if you have any gaps or anything like that that you're trying to fill, this I don't think I put in my other, well I did not put in any other of my videos where I'm welding, but this is just me trying on something new. Just getting it as low as possible because I don't want to have to sand forever. So I'm just trying to get it as evenly matched on there as possible. Getting it as low profile as I can on there. You could probably hear see if there's a difference. Not much of a difference, but you can feel the difference. As I'm doing this, it gets softer and softer and softer. Until it's pretty much laying right on top of it. So I'm just bringing the, the thickness of this down and down and down until it's nice and even. And then once it's nice and even, I'm just going to sand it and then put some primer over it, and you won't see this at all. Doesn't look the greatest right now, of course, because this is still the work stage, the prep stage, but that line is now gone. I'm just gonna do that on the sides as well. Like these vents that it comes with on the side I don't know why that just looks cool as hell <laughs> the person I'm making it for said the same as well is the face plate so I just went from all of those parts to now fully assembled now this is where the fun part starts because now I got to keep sanding make sure I get the detail everything else like that but it's always good at this part because everything's together so you can just keep looking at your project so it's like yeah, it's worth it like I can't wait to see the full thing. The little seam right there that's probably because like I said the failed print but I'm going to work that out as well. But this thing is huge like the, the helmet part of it sits on my shoulders. I'll show you guys hold on let me show you guys what I mean. Alright so you guys can see. Like, it's, this thing is humongous. <laughs> There's like so much free space in here. If I had more time, if he didn't need it, like today is Tuesday, he needs it before Saturday. 
I can definitely get all this done and painted, but I kind of want to add some cushion in here. But I also don't know who he's giving it to, so I don't know the size of his head, everything like that. But if I was making this for myself, which I'm most likely going to do, I'd add some cushion in here and make it, make it real nice on the inside. But as you can see, this thing is pretty damn big. That is crazy. When this is done, oh my goodness, when this thing is done, it's going to be amazing. All right, stay tuned guys from here. Now I'm just gonna let this wood filler continue to dry. I'm gonna take it, sand it down a little, take it outside, put some of the filler primer. I will almost be there. Stay tuned. All right, and then for the primer, I use automotive primer. And then this is what it looks like. You can see pretty much, it looks like a little damp, that's where the wood filler is. I'm actually going to be trying something new this time. These lines, I'm leaving these lines here, because those are supposed to, if you look at the helmet, they're kind of supposed to be there. And they kind of like blend in too, so I'll just leave those in. I'm not too concerned about those. But like where I attached everything, that's where I'm going to be pasting in. The back of the helmet, you see it's nice and smooth. just sanded down the wood filler that was on there so that's perfect and then this side so now I just added wood filler here so I'm just gonna be waiting for these spots to dry as you can see as I run my finger over it's kind of like breaking off that's how you know it's not ready yet and then the face plate now I'm gonna try something new this Bondo like I said it stinks to high hell I'm sure it's not something you should be inhaling pretty much like everything else in this hobby so <laughs> I'm gonna take this outside mix it up I'm gonna try a new process pretty much try to wood filler everything first but as you see the wood filler takes a lot of time to, to dry so I'll do that for the first layer and then what I'm gonna start to do is start to use this um, all-purpose putty this Bondo putty to kind of get in after because it says 15 minutes it's ready to go so it's just gonna make the process a little bit quicker and I think that's gonna get in a lot better in these smaller spots so I'll try that. Filler, wood, wood filler, filler primer, and then after the first layer of wood filler, everything else is just going to be the putty from there. So we'll see how that goes. And also, I just got some different sandpaper too. Some wet sand, or wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit. So this is double the 200 that I normally go. I'm just trying to get a lot smoother. And again, this one's for somebody, so I want it to come out as good as possible. But this one I'm going to try wetting, wetting the sandpaper and then sanding like that. I've been seeing that that makes it really smooth for your print. So I'm going to give it a try with this one. Alright, and I know it looks like a little scratched up, but trust me, that's smooth. There's no like patches or anything. It looks like the wet sanding, um, either, well, I'm pretty sure my filler primer is set. But it just felt like it was scrape, scrapping, scraping up some of the, um, some of the primer. Could have been the primer that was like stuck into the this white stuff here is like the wood filler but it just felt like it was like stripping some of that so to me that means it gets like pretty thorough and this feels like a lot smoother and you can hear like if you can hear that that's like the difference between just regular sanded and then the wet sanded so to me, it gets a lot smoother. But I guess just check what kind of primer that you have. Again, I don't know if it was because of the wood filler. I mean, I don't know if it was because of the wood filler or if it was because of what kind of primer I used, but it just so it seemed like it was like, you can probably still see some of it. Like it was picking it up. But other than that, it did a good job. So I just spray, of course, like another layer of the filler primer. But besides that, it, it did a damn good job. All right, what I didn't record was I took some of the 60 grit sandpaper again and where I had welded it, that, um, that piece over the middle, I just knocked that down a lot more. So now that's, that's very smooth. You can see or you can hear it. There's no ridges, anything like that. So I took the 60 grit and then I took some 180 grit. 
and just sanded that down, primed it, and then after that, I just hit it with some more of the 220 and then some of the 400 wet sandpaper. And that's like a baby's butt. So I got both sides done now. Not fully done, but patched. So from now I'm just going to add another layer of filler primer, see where I need to patch in some more. And like I said, I'm not going to use the wood filler after that, I'm going to try this Bondo, some of this putty. So we'll see how that comes out, but it's already looking good. It's already looking like something. Stay tuned. Alright, so this is the Bondo. I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. Like I said before, the reason I don't do this stuff is because I'm indoors and this stuff smells bad. It shouldn't be inhaling it, so. It's a two-part thing. You get the Bondo itself, the putty. And then you get this hardener activator here. These both come together. And pretty much what you want to do, it's just like wood filler, but this here, this hardener, pretty much the, the, the basics behind it is you want to use more of this to quicken up the hardening process of the putty. Less of this for like normal time, pretty much. So let's get to it. Pretty much if you don't use that hardener, the way that this putty looks now is just pretty much what you're always going to have. It's not going to stiffen up. I don't need a lot. So, if from the 90s, you remember that cereal? Two scoops. That's all I need. And then close this back up. Because that's, so we got that good. So I just took like a little solo cup and just pretty much cut it with some scissors. Now I'm going to add the hardener. And then they say just stir it for like a couple minutes, like two, three minutes. You just want to get the stir. I probably put a lot in there, but. Alright. So that like white film, that's the hardener. And now let's just stir that thing up. Probably put just a little bit more. As I dump like a whole bunch in there. But like I said, it won't hurt. That's just going to help everything dry quicker, which is what I'm trying to get. So I probably shouldn't have been doing this with a plastic spoon, but hey. Just use that as a test that'll know pretty much tell me how hard it's gonna get pause. So do this for about a good two to three minutes. Get it all worked in there. Alright, I didn't want to have you guys sit there and watch me whipping it. Whipping the brick, whipping it. No, I'm just kidding. But pretty much you just want to stir it up. You'll see how like the spoon is kind of like going a little bit slower in there now. You just want to whip it up. You'll feel it. Like you can already kind of see. I probably took a little bit too much time. Because this thing is starting to, uh, oops. Starting to get kind of hard on itself already. I just 
put a little bit too much probably. But I'm learning. Let me see, I'll probably just do it like this. Oh yeah, that stuff is rock hard quick. So that's a, this is a fail. So this is me learning. So you see my spoon can't even get in there anymore. I took too much time, so now I get it. I used a lot of that stuff in there, that's why that happened. But I taught you guys in the meantime as well. So now I'm just gonna get, so I had another cup, put some more in there, and now I know what I'm doing. But that's all you wanna do with the Bondo. Get some of the putty in there, mix it with some of this hardener, stir it, and then apply. All right, I didn't really record that part because like, once you get that hardener in there, the clock is kind of ticking. So I don't want to keep wasting the, um, wasting the putty in the hardener. But it dries super quickly. Like, oh my goodness. Opposed to the wood filler where I got to like sometimes leave it to sit for a day. This stuff, like instantly. It's like once you get it on there and that hardener activates, that's it. That, that thing is a done deal pretty much. And I think it covers a lot better than what the wood filler did as well. I mean, I like it because how quickly everything is done, but it's just the smell. I don't know if I would really trust it like on when I do the top of the domes, but like for where I, um, where I weld it, covering up those seams, hell yeah, 100% I would recommend this. Just either go outside somewhere where it's well ventilated, because you don't really want to be inhaling this stuff. But besides that, it does a hell of a job and super quick, super quick drying. Now I'm just going to sand this again and then see what we're looking at like from there. Alright, so earlier in the video I said I didn't really care about by the vents, the little gaps that were there. But I just wanted to test out the Bondo, see how good it did, and it did a damn good job. Like I said, as quickly as it dries, that's the big difference. I feel like sanding it down was a lot easier than the wood filler too. Sometimes the wood filler is like a little clumpy. And it's like you got to put a little bit of extra elbow grease in it. But with this, not so much. I just used like 120 and 220 sandpaper. And then like a little bit of the 400. But like you can see all those gaps are pretty much gone now. Like you can see like little clumps where I added a little bit too much. I just sand those down easily. Once the um, filler primer um, sticks, and once it dries, but damn, that saved me so much time. Just because of how quickly that dries. Like I said, if fumes, if you have a place that you can work where the fumes aren't going to bother you, definitely go for the Bondo. But just work quickly with it, because that stuff does dry. Now once it's hard, that's it. But besides that, it did good. So I'll probably just sand this down from here and then get ready for paint. All right, so after the primer, this is the first coat. This one I'm doing a little backwards. The friend that I'm making for, he wants it a custom color, so he wants it black and gold. Normally I do the black and then the silver, but this time I'm doing silver because this silver dries very quickly and it works good with the clear coat. So I'll be using this clear coat. And it just gives it more like a, a plastic feeling. Instead of feeling like the filament, it feels like an actual like factory made toy after I spray it on this um on this metal. That's the first layer. So after this, I'm gonna hit this little piece with the gold. And then tape that off and then do everything else black on the helmet. And then just going to hit this with the acrylic. And then finish that with gold. And now we got the first coat of gold. You can kind of see as I'm moving like the light reflection. That's that clear coat that I had first set on there. And then just a little on the jaw. So I just let those two dry, probably do one or two more coats, add the black, 
magnifico. All right, so that came out excellent. I also just got these little fiber towels, microfiber towels. I got this from, um, what was it, AutoZone or something like that? One of the auto stores, but you can pretty much get this at Walmart, anything like that. Um, you can see the glare. So I'm, you can kind of tell what I'm doing. I'm just buffing it down. Any imperfections, anything like that. <laughs> just bringing that shine out a lot more. Since I use the acrylic um, clear coat, this thing, like, you can't even tell, like, where I welded it right there, too. But this thing feels so smooth. It feels like an actual, like, product, and that's what I liked. I figured that out when I did the iron bat. You can see that shine on it, too. And when I touched it after that, I was like, what? This feels so crazy. So I did it on this. And it worked like a charm. All right, like I mentioned, of course, this is the actual color. The gold is, but the black is not, of course. This is a custom color, so this is what my friend wanted it to look like. I'm not too, yay. I don't know, the black looks, it, it doesn't look bad. Maybe once I put the face plate there, it'll look a little bit better. Um, I would have liked to see the red. It is what it is, but I'm probably going to make another one of these and do a custom color. Once I put the face plate there, it's probably going to shock me, so you never know. Because that gold does hit pretty hard on this. So. But you'll notice where I removed the painter's tape, you'll see the gold that I sprayed as far as the first level. So what I'm going to do now, like I mentioned to you guys, I just have the black and the gold that I use. Because you see I need a little touch up on that gold. I'm just going to spray some on this little piece of paper. And then just use this little paintbrush. And then just tap those in. So if you ever have like little lines that you have to do like that, Again, with the spray paint, just do it in an area where you're not worried about um, ventilation or because or, or, you don't want to inhale this. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm going to do now. Just paint that in, and then it's done. guys thanks for staying around watching that full video if this helped you as always you never know who else it can help so hit that like button hit that share button guys and if you want to come along with me for the journey on more of my other builds hit the subscribe button i'm always making something every week and teaching you guys exactly how to do it as always it's 3db thank you guys god bless